So this is a super fascinating research paper, The Re Relativity of Causal Knowledge, and it's put out by Harvard and Sapienza University out of Rome, Italy. And so to frame this paper, yesterday I talked about uh, a concept, the Universal Approximation Theorem, this particular concept, right? Uh, and then this concept is is a theory, a theorem, right? So you can see universal approximation theorem, which means that it's not proven. Um, and so this was created in 1989. And then uh, as I developed and as I pointed out yesterday, like the fact that this remains a theorem is you can say it would be the cause of the second AI winter, right? The first AI winter, we would say it would be from like 1969 until like 1986 or so. Uh, and then the second AI winter uh, took place, let's say from like, uh, like, like the mid 1990s until the mid 2000s. Um, and then like this theory came out in 1989. And then it garnered a lot of interest and support around AI during that time. Like so from like 1989 to like 1993 or so, like, you know, Terminator 2 comes out during this time. There's a lot of movies that are uh, influenced, you know, during this time and then all of this. But uh, essentially, we're not able to solve for this. And then so, like, not being able to solve for this and prove this true, like, uh, kind of kills, like, the interest in, in AI that occurred after this paper was, like, after this theorem was released. But so the theorem overall basically says that if you give a, a neural network a sufficient amount of compute and it's designed in the right way, it can solve any problem, <laughs> like, like uh, anything, right? Um, and then so people still, uh, you know, like build on this particular research and, and, and on this theorem. And then so that's what this uh, research paper is, right? So like... Uh, very simplistically, like the best breakdown of it that they give it is here, right? So uh, the relativity of causal knowledge states that causal knowledge is subjective and interconnected rather than objective and isolated. And so kind of the bottom line is, is that like this throws a wrench into causality theory uh, overall, right? It, it says that like um, all of causality is a human construct and like the way that I construct this in my head is the lottery analogy. <laughs> and to me, it's it, it it frames this very simplistically. So, uh, lot like the numbers, uh, the winning lottery numbers in and of themselves are a human construct, right? Like the lottery, uh, its system is a human construct. What those numbers are, what they're going to be, what they have been, all of that is a human construct if there's a meaning behind it like if you want to associate uh, meaning behind like the uh, if I take a data set of the last 365 days of the winning lottery numbers then you assign meaning to that that's a human construct right uh, and then very specifically that human construct can can it change and have a lot of weight depending on the human construct and then so in this lottery example if I give you the winning lottery numbers for yesterday, it's basically meaningless. If I give you the winning lottery numbers for tomorrow, that's gold, right? <laughs> like, uh, if I, you know, I mean, like, here's 100% accuracy, the no winning lottery numbers for tomorrow, it's worth like 98% of its value, basically, um, because it's, <laughs> if I can prove it, right? You know, but that's a human construct, and the causality of that itself is a human construct. So in that instance, we're comparing two instances, yesterday versus tomorrow. And then in that instance, we're, ta we're talking about another human construct of lottery numbers, the lottery numbers yesterday versus the lottery numbers tomorrow. And then that entire equation, everything that we're putting into that box is a human construct. The causality of all of that, that causality string that we're putting together, the, the connections that we're making between that is a human construct. And then with that information, if you're able to design a model that is able to work on human constructs itself and then to operate off of this like causal knowledge and the way that it works, uh, you can get a model to predict the human constructs, predict the future of the human construct. And then so that is very specifically what they lay out within this method, right? So they break it down into the network sheaf and the co-sheaf of causal knowledge. And then this entire research paper is essentially uh, their categorical breakdown of, of how to do that, right? And then so they essentially, they prove out like uh, through mathematics that there is not like that the actual causality between knowledge strings is the human construct.
right? and then they they prove like how to like how to get a model to model that human construct, like how to encode causal knowledge within convex spaces, essentially, uh, and they break on all of this down, right? It, it forms shapes, everything we've been telling you, uh, kind of within this, right? It's all coming together uh, within this type of research. But then, so the uh, w- they put all of this together, and that's essentially the research paper, right? And they, they provide all the math for it. And then, so doing what I like to do, let's actually build it out, right? So cool, this is the research paper. It's 14 pages long, uh, and they say that it works. Uh, let's prove that it works. Right? So what if you could predict the future, not just with math, but by simulating how a swarm of intelligent agents learns, adapts, and echoes each other's insights over time? That's exactly what this notebook explores. At its heart, this system is a futuristic forecasting model, but it doesn't follow traditional approaches. Instead, it mimics how a group of cooperating agents think of them like tiny thinkers, how they exchange beliefs, how they harmonize their knowledge, and gradually build a shared understanding of what comes next. Uh, like, so kind of the bottom line, like this, so this theorem, right? Uh, it, it, like, how, how do you prove this theorem true? And like, what does it actually mean? Like, in, a, in terms of a model, in terms of dealing with a, a, a model and a model system, to me, what it means very simplistically, and I, I believe that there are multiple ways to do this. So I'm going to prove it out via swarm intelligence and swarm algorithms and resonance theory. I believe you could do this via hypervectors. I believe that there's a multiple different ways to do this. But so... Uh, what the idea is, is that we start with a human construct. And then, so in this instance, I'm going to use Bitcoin as the reference, right? So Bitcoin, like we, we know what the price is of Bitcoin and we know what the trajectory is of Bitcoin. Both are human constructs. And then, so what I want to uh, take from that is knowing the human construct of what the price of Bitcoin is today and the trajectory of Bitcoin is today, what is the human construct of the price of Bitcoin tomorrow, which is based off of all of those elements, right? Um, and then that's essentially what we get at. And, uh, the way that I, so what I can do within this, like kind of how this all comes together, like a simple framework for this and a simple way to frame it, like how, like grasping what is actually occurring is so I take a model and it makes a prediction on this, right? Uh, and then that prediction is either true or false according to the human, and then it's either true or false according to the human construct. So uh, the price of Bitcoin today is $80,000. The price of Bitcoin tomorrow will be $80,001. That's my prediction. That prediction will be either true or false according to the human construct, right? And there's a 50 50 chance of, of either one. And then so, uh, all we do is we then take another model and then train on that prediction. So the the outcome and the prediction is is 50-50. Now we take another model and then we introduce like so uh, like the logic behind this, right, is the the, like the Monte Carlo hypothesis and, and, and the Monte Carlo problem or, or uh, the Monte Hall problem, like which is uh, a famous problem, right? So it's um, like the uh, you have a probability and you have door number one and door number two and then and then door number three and then you pick a door and then it's revealed that behind one of the doors that you did not pick is a goat. And then so do you stick with your original choice or do you move your choice? And then what is found is that there's actually a higher probability by about 33% to switch your choice, right? It's like, so taking that same logic, right? We take the initial estimate and the initial model is trained on uh, the price of Bitcoin will be um, $8,001 tomorrow. And then it predicts 50-50 that it's true or false. And then we take another model and we train it on that prediction, right? But that prediction is different. And the Monty Hall problem t- tells us very specifically that it's different if we break it down, right? We have a uh, actual stronger probability if we change the initial model's guess. And I don't know, the model guessed true or false, right? And then so it guessed true or false. Uh, and then whatever that is, we change that opinion. And then so we're increasing the probability uh, of that outcome, that ballistic outcome being true, if we daisy chain, say, 50 of those models or those agents together, and we daisy chain their beliefs, and then their beliefs are then stacked on top of each other based off of this, uh, we'll call it this Monty Hall logic, eventually, if we stack it like 50 times, the agents are going to get a much better prediction. Like the 50th outcome is going to be like 
a uh, hundred times closer to the truth than than the first model. Like the first model was coin flipping, and the second model, the fiftieth model, is trained on all of these money hall uh, simulations, basically. And <laughs> those money hall simulations are going to be far more accurate than a fifty fifty coin flip overall. Uh, and that's just essentially what we're dealing with here, right? So we, we essentially we break this down into uh, and and how we construct this into a model is so each agent has a belief. Right, and then they hold their belief, and they hold their belief with a confidence level, uh, and then we essentially are just training and 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 getting models to uh, training them to predict with more and more accuracy, with more confidence level on their belief, but they're not actually getting the actual answer. <laughs> they're just forced to increase their confidence level on the belief. Uh, and so, and then that's like all of this math. That's that's what it's all doing, right? And so this sheaf and co co sheaf expansion, it's like running simulations within the model to to simulate its uh, convergence on a belief. <laughs> uh, kind of crazy, right? But so we we do it, we break it down, and, and it actually works. Like so, then this is the the uh, a, a initial agent outputs and the initial agent beliefs, and then we can see that we do like we train the model over time, right? So in this instance, we train it over five steps that adjust the belief system, like very simple, like this is following the Monty Hall problem, right? Uh, the, the smartest woman in the world is right. You, congratulations. Like she's smarter than everybody else in the world for a reason. <laughs> and, 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 and the math checks out. Uh, and then so we go through, let's take that a step further. Let's graph it out. Cool. It's working. <laughs> like, like, like uh, they're, they're converging, right? Like they're like, uh, they're, decreasing the amount of error over time amazing <laughs> like kind of uh, radical and cool to see overall right and then we can see that so i introduce in this instance more agents and then in, in a different like, like trying to like simulate it or or visualize it better uh and then it's i mean it's that they're converging on something right uh they're converging on on their beliefs on um, in this instance, I haven't defined. Uh, I, I just define it as a, a human construct, right? Like so, it's it's uh, there's a belief that I put into this box called a human construct, uh, and then they are essentially just summing towards the belief of a human construct. Uh, and then I do eventually here, I, I put in like, okay, so we're going to make the, the human construct not here yet, actually. Uh, so more, right? I, I, in this instance, I'm just testing it in, in, in more data sets. So we can see it's literally converging towards uh, the error hits almost zero. And all I'm doing is training it on a belief, like on, a, on imaginary stuff. <laughs> like it's, it's, it's training on the, like, uh, see, I, I, human defined hidden target. That's what it's training on this. Uh, and then it's, it, it, it like, it, it convergence on that, <laughs> like without being told to, without being optimized to, without gradient descent, gearing it towards the human construct. It just does because it, it, it is able to understand that it's a human construct. Uh, and then, uh, so, uh, essentially, I take this a step further, right? And then I want to actually, like, uh, as I've pointed out in this, this video states, I want it to do uh, Bitcoin analysis. So the very first thing I, I try to do is I, I test this out a bit more just to make sure it's like it's actually working. It's actually working. Look at the, like it's the error decreases over time and we get convergence of the error. Uh, and then uh, let me do it first on a like, so this is a, like, um, uh, up until here, it's not a prediction model. This predict this is uh, essentially like taking um, like the beliefs and then uh, like backtracking the error on the beliefs. Like how how well is the model able to train on this? Like and then for some reason, it's able to train on it, right? Very clearly and specifically, it does. Uh, and then so if we make that, um, it, we turn the the switch, right? So it's it's no longer like just predicting, like or, or it's like like no longer just calculating based off of the past. It, it's doing it off of the future can i do that and then just off of that that human construct data set and like I, this is a perfect convergence right like this is like almost perfect like and so it's it's guessing the the human construct and and like on the left hand side here is what you want to pay attention to right and the, the little blue sticking out is where it's it, it misses so it, like it's like almost perfectly reconstructing a human construct and then the, the average error in this instance is is 48 of our average arbitrary numbers uh, which is it you know it's starting off like uh higher in, into the 90s <laughs> and then um so decreasing significantly over time with that error and the, and the error goes but i mean this is uh, like much more what i want to pay attention to that it's actually 
apparently reconstructing it. This error, it's reconstructing the error rate off of a human construct. Like the error is a human construct in and of itself, right? Which is kind of unique within this. But so, okay. It works. Uh, we can get it to train on a human construct. Now let's get it to train on something real, right? Like uh, Bitcoin. And so I figure like people would see it to this point and they'd be like, okay, that that's cool. But um, like what? Like what? Like will it actually do something? Yep, yep, it actually will. <laughs> so we take uh, here's Bitcoin, and then I'm using this API. Like it's just pulling the live prices from from CoinGecko. Uh, and then very same simulation, right? Like I'm trying to get it to, to predict the price of Bitcoin over time and look at it. Like it's, it's, I mean, it's pretty accurate, bro. Like this is my, like one of my first attempts, like without like, uh, dialing it hard, uh, and, and like, uh, okay, like can I, and then can I dial it better? And this gives you a, like a clearer example, right? You can see how it doesn't perfectly overlay, uh, as opposed to like our baseline simulation here where like, this is like, like. 98% accuracy, right? And then this would be like like 60-70% accuracy, maybe. Like, but I mean, like it's all predicting <laughs> this is predicting the Bitcoin, the price of Bitcoin tomorrow, right? Like that that uh analogy I set up in the in in, in um the beginning, like what's the future price of the lottery? Like what are the winning lot lottery numbers for tomorrow? At this point, this algorithm would be better than just standard random guessing on that question, which is what we want, right? Uh, but then can we make it like better than that? Can I dial it? And then so I get it dialed specifically like to here. And, and this is like pretty good to me, right? Like uh, you're looking at this, like it's it's converging on, on, and then this is all again, the price of Bitcoin, right? So uh, it's predicting the price of Bitcoin based off of these trajectory metrics and it's getting fed these. And then, so this model, you can have it run and it would update, like uh, if you add a piece that I have up here, you can run it every single hour and update, like um, have it update um, like in real time your prices you can automate this model basically very simplistically uh, and it would work and it would give you uh, if you're interested in like Bitcoin training pricing etc this is a model that doesn't exist right now <laughs> that is uh, much better like it's so it, like a baseline human performance is, is going to out beat out baseline human performance exactly how it is right now like, baseline human performance is one of biases and, and how your works uh, with shortcuts etc right that this cuts out so like I can make that statement very definitively within that. So within this model, like, so this model, like all of my um, financial models that I'm playing around with and building on this, like they, I'm going to license them the same way. If you're an individual, you can feel free to do whatever you want with this. Like, you know, do whatever you want to your heart's content. If you are like a corporation an entity that comprises more than one individual, like you're a conglomerate of Bitcoin traders, whatever the case may be, you need to contact me uh, in advance before like, using this model in any way like corporate entities group entities uh groups of bitcoin traders etc you have like no license to utilize this model if you're an individual entity utilize this until your heart's content um and then so uh here it is i'll release i'll give you the link to the collab notebook uh, as well as the harvard research paper very unique and interesting research paper the activity of causal knowledge if you like this type of content please like and subscribe thank you much